hello and welcome to whoever happened to stumble upon this video or come back to my channel hi my name is dana and i'm very happy to have you here today and just a quick reminder if you did not see my last video or you're new to my channel i am planning a 1000 subscriber giveaway where i make a painting for a special subscriber who gets selected so subscribe if you are not already and you want to stay tuned and hear my updates about that because we're getting kind of close to that 1000 mark which is so exciting into today's video so today i was kind of thinking about bullet journaling and kind of what other things I could share with you guys and things that I'm currently working on in my personal life. I'm going to show you guys the savings tracker that I made and give you kind of some tips on how to get saving and things that I'm trying to do right now. So really quick before I get into it, I just wanted to talk about something I've been doing recently. Um, I recently opened an account with Ally Bank. This is not sponsored. However, if you guys want to reach out, I am a very happy customer. But for your savings account, they have this thing called buckets where you can separate out the money for different things like I'm showing here or make your own label. And it's just helpful to see how you want to organize your money within your savings account, not just having it on paper. First off, I will talk about the savings tracker that I made so if that's the part of the video that you're interested in here you go and then if you want to hear some tips about how to get saving and how to save more then listen to that part after I had to keep it really simple because I didn't want to do anything crazy I know especially once you're in the grown-up world you can get pretty busy or even if you're just like 16 and you got your first job and you want to start saving for things that you want to get in the future I just wanted to give something super simple that anybody could follow and you could kind of spice it up if you wanted to or you could tone it down I know I added in some little doodles because that's just my vibe but if you just wanted to straight up write the title of the thing that you're saving for then you could do that but really all I did and I made this one a little bit long because I did it on the side of the page so I just filled it up as much space as I could because the things that I'm saving for aren't too eminent but if there's something you're saving for in a couple of months, you can just put however many boxes until that thing is, because I just did a box per month. But that's really just depending on the style and how motivated you need to be. I know for myself, I do a lot of tracker. If I need more like reassurance that I'm on track and that I'm making progress, I'll make more boxes. So if you have a smaller income, and like me, I'm only 21, I'm not, having a salary job that makes a ton of money so I don't make a ton of money to save but it really just kind of depends on how you want to lay it out but I did one box per month so you could do more or less depending on your personal preference is what I'm trying to say and I didn't do 12 boxes that's what I was going to do initially but I had more room on the page and also I have a lot of room left in this bullet journal that's pretty new so I don't know how long it's going to last me and you don't have to do this in a bullet journal you can just do it on a piece of paper if you want to so really whatever amount of boxes you need is for you and then so for me I just made four categories I did emergency because it's always important to have an emergency fund and for me I just put whatever other savings I have that's not going to anything in particular into this because it's kind of just like my generic if I need it for something I'm not saving for right now fund oh nobody's making like a special appearance in every single one of my videos you want to say hi hi puppy my special girl okay I want to hold her up to the window because she's gonna see something that she wants to bark at all right so yeah like I was saying I have my emergency fund my next one is NP school here's practitioner school um, right now I'm still in nursing school but I'm in my last year and I do plan on going back to school within like two years of graduation and grad school is expensive so I'm starting to save now I have a vacation fund because I'm planning my next summer's vacation and then this may seem kind of um, silly for some people but I have a home fund I'm only 21 right now and I don't plan on moving into a home that soon I want to you know rent an apartment for a while but I think if you start saving just a little bit a month it'll really add up more than you think it will so yeah so those are what I did um, what you choose to make your categories is really personal to you and mine are more long-term kind of goal things it doesn't have to be that way if you're saving up for like a material object like you're saving for a new camera you could do something like that and that would be a set goal these things don't really have a set goal it's just I put in how much I think I could save every month and just kept it going throughout that time if you're saving for an item that is a thousand dollars you can split it up 
over how much you can save monthly and how many months it's going to take you to do that. So how I made it for the boxes is I really went through and kind of looked at my income and figured out how much I could save monthly. So that kind of goes into my transition into talking about my tips because my first tip about saving, especially like I was saying, I'm kind of saving for like long term down the line things that you could save any amount of money for. Like if I'm saving for grad school or to buy a house, it's not like I know right now that that's gonna cost me X amount of dollars. So that's what I'm saving towards. Like I don't know how much my future house is gonna be. I don't know how much grad school is gonna cost when I'm there. So I'm just kind of saving money as much as I can. So my first tip kind of leading into those is that you want to set realistic goals for yourself when it comes to saving. I know you might want to say like, I want to buy this thing and I'm going to buy it by this month. So I have to save X amount per month or I want to have this amount in my savings account by the end of the year. So I have to save this amount per month. So that's good. You like want to have ambitious goals but you don't want to be too far in over your head where your goals aren't achievable and then you get discouraged and you kind of are like whatever I'm just gonna stop trying so what I did and what I recommend you guys do is I sat down and kind of figured out how much I make per month approximately because I don't have a salary job I work and I pick up shifts so I'm a substitute teacher so I pick up X amount of sub shifts a month approximately and I work at Hackensack Medical Center as a nursing assistant and I pick up X amount of shifts monthly so I kind of went and did that like approximately how much I'm making a month and then you want to subtract any bills from that I'm from a privileged position talking about this because I'm 21 I still live in my parents house and I don't have any debt so I don't really have expenses other than like putting gas into my car so for me my expenses bill wise and I like pay for Spotify so I understand that's not the position for everybody but you want to take into account how much you make and then how much you have to spend every month because that's like non-negotiable if you have a mortgage or car insurance or something like that like that you have to take out and then you have after that the kind of other amount and then with that extra I personally think you should leave a little bit aside for your own spending money because I think if you again this is with setting a realistic goal for yourself if you say every dollar that I make that isn't directly going to bills I need to save then again you're gonna kind of get into a place where it's like oh my goal isn't realistic and I'm not meeting it so then like what's even the point of trying to meet it so set a little bit aside and that's kind of personal how much or what percent I like to kind of work in percents so if you want to say okay I'll take 10% of that amount that I have left and just put that aside for like my personal monthly spending and if I don't spend all of it then I'll put it into savings and then you want to look at your categories of things that you want to save for it could be just one it could be multiple and kind of prioritize which ones are most important to you so again like I said I work in percent so the most important things for me that I want to save towards right now are my grad school and my future vacation so I took the largest percent to those and that amount I kind of separated out and I looked at the rest and I split that in half for my like future home fund because I'm not really contributing a lot of that right now and then my core savings fund so hopefully that made sense I'll kind of like go through it quickly again in case it didn't I'm going to give you guys like an example with dollars so just say you make a thousand dollars a month and then your core expenses are $500 a month. So you subtract that out and you have $500 left. Say, all right, um, I'm gonna dedicate 10% of that to just like my personal spending. Like if I wanna go out to lunch with my friends or you know, go for drinks or get coffee, whatever, 10% of that a month, so $50 I'm dedicating to myself. And I'm, I'm just using like random numbers, so whatever numbers you have. And then the rest of that, $450, you're going to want to take that and kind of prioritize what things are important to you for saving. Um, so you can split them each 25% or you could say, these two things are my priority. So I'm going to do 40% to this one, 40% to that one, 10% and 10%. So personally, that's what I did. So that was kind of a lengthy explanation. I hope that made sense. I'm going to try and add in some like numbers in hopes that like it over the screen, hopes that that made sense for you guys. But on to the next tip. So if you get a raise, you should try and save the extra money. So I'm going to kind of elaborate on that a little bit. But if you make, let's just say you, I'm, I'm just going to go hourly because that's how I get paid. Just say you make $20 an hour 
and you were living comfortably off of that. Again, I know I'm kind of talking about this from a privileged position as someone who is financially comfortable, but so if you are comfortable with the amount of money you make, um, obviously if you get a raise and you need to spend that money, you will. Um, but to say you're financially comfortable at your $20 an hour and you're not acquiring debt and you can kind of pay everything that you need to pay and you're doing good. So if you are in that position and you get a raise and now you make $25 an hour, that extra $5 an hour that you're getting on your paychecks, you should just take that increase in your income and make that an increase in your savings. Because if you were living comfortably at $20 an hour before and you don't need that extra money, then you can put it in savings and you're kind of going to be living the same way and it won't feel like you got a raise, but that raise is going to go into your savings. Tip number three is something I think is really interesting. It's not something I've personally tried, but I saw this tip, I think it was on a TikTok and I thought it was really interesting and I'm going to start doing this as well. So before when I was talking about your spending money and things like that, like just personal money for me. So if you're the type of person who just likes to get Starbucks every day, you go out for drinks with your friends, things like that, or you just like always find yourself kind of wanting to buy like silly little things just cause. So if you find yourself spending money on like frivolous things like that, and these things are kind of personal for everybody. Like if you want to add into your budget that you go to Starbucks every day, like do it. But if you find yourself kind of trying to cut back on those expenses, so just say you're going to get Starbucks and it costs $4, you should take $4 and put it into your savings. And if you don't have $8 to do this, then you should kind of rethink like, oh, do I really want to go and spend the money on this coffee? If I can't take that and put it into savings as well, then should I be spending it and kind of think about it that way. So I thought that was a really interesting idea and I'm going to start doing that. Like if I'm browsing around TJ Maxx and just buying things that I don't really need and I'm like, oh, I want to buy like XXX and it spends like $40 I'd be like, okay, well, I'm going to spend $40 on things I don't need. I should take $40 and put it into my savings account as well. And if you can't do that, you should be thinking like, should I really be buying these things? And that's not to say that you can't treat yourself every once in a while. Of course you can. I was saying earlier that I think that you should dedicate spending money just to yourself every month, but you don't want to get carried away with that. So that's kind of a way to think that like if you're going outside of your budget of like how much you allotted to yourself every month, then you can kind of start thinking like, well, this extra money that I am spending, can I also save that same amount? My next tip, which is something I've been doing for years, probably since my freshman year of college, is I keep track of my spending. Like I write every transaction I do down because I really don't use cash. I do everything through my debit card. So when you use your debit card, it really doesn't feel like you're spending money. And what can happen is you just swipe it, swipe it, swipe it, whatever. And if you're not checking your banking app all the time, like you're not really seeing the money that you're spending. All right, so I'll do like a spending tracker every month like that. And what I do with it is I'll write my starting amount at the top at the beginning of every month. And then I use a green pen and a red pen. And every time I make money, so when I get paid, I'll write that in green. I'll say my paycheck and how much it was. And every time I spend money, so like here I got gas, I got a birthday present, I went to Chipotle, I'll like write Chipotle and how much I spent. And then at the end of the month, I'll say how much I ended with and I'll look at how much I spent, what kind of things I was buying and how much I made. So even just the fact that like I write it down kind of keeps me more accountable to myself. So I'll like if I'm online shopping, am I like, mm, do I really want to spend this money? Like, do I really want to like look back and be like, oh, Dana, like, why did you spend X amount of money this month on Starbucks? Things like that. So I find just writing it down keeps me a lot more accountable. I know if you have like literal cash in your wallet and you can see the cash leaving, you kind of look at it and you're like, oh, I see that like I have less money now. But when you are doing that with a card, you don't have that same effect. So I try and kind of give that to myself. So I recommend that to anyone who has never tried that. I think it's definitely helped me a lot um, to really see where my money goes. And that can also help you when you're kind of looking at setting your goals for yourself and seeing like, okay, I make this much money every month, but like, where is it going? And you can kind of look and be like, oh, I go out to eat all the time. So if you're setting your goal for yourself that like, I'm only gonna spend $50 a month on things that I don't need, then you can kind of really think about and see that money leaving when you write it down and see, okay, I have $10 left in my like me fund or my go out to eat fund, like let me use it responsibly. All right, and my 
last tip so i really like doing this i do this all the time to think about spending money the same way you think about making money and again i get paid hourly so i think this is easier to do if you're an hourly employee than a salaried employee but if you want to do the math you totally can so just say you make $15 an hour and you go and buy, um, you're looking at something and it's $45. So instead of being like, okay, it's $45, but like, okay, that's three hours of work. Like, is this worth three hours of work? To think of it like that, I feel like that kind of helps keep you in check about like, is this worth the money? And kind of really thinking about like, how much work you put in to make that money and how easy it is to spend it. And also, if you're in the opportunity to do so, if you wanna buy things that aren't outside of your budget for the month, or if you just wanna buy something extra, try and pick up a shift at work. Like if you know this thing is going to cost six hours of work, try and pick up that extra hours so you can get that thing and it's not kind of messing up your budget that you made for yourself so those are my tips i hope they're helpful to you guys if you have any tips that you use that help you save money comment them down below or how you budget obviously like i was saying earlier my budget is different i'm a 21 year old with really minimal expenses so i do again recognize the privilege of that i'm talking about saving and spending and budgeting and things like that because i don't have the same kind of expenses that i know a lot of people have or i will have in the future so if you have any extra tips you want to leave down below that have helped you, um, please share with the rest of us. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to me if you have not already and you want to stay tuned for my giveaway. I post new videos every Sunday and Wednesday, so stay tuned for those and I hope to see you next time.